Everything good, everything bright, everything holy, everything right, everything worthy, all that I should. And all is well, cause I'm gonna dwell on everything good. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. And take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. And I will call upon your name. And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise My soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine Song You gotta realize what we're singing have you ever said to the Lord, lead me out into the deep where the waves are, where you don't know where you're going or what you're going to face? I really have to say in my lifetime, I mean, I've faced troubles and faced situations, but there came a time in my life where I knew that God was leading me in a different direction. And sometimes we've got to walk by faith and we can't go by what we're seeing. We've got to go by what our, the Word of God says. Yes. And we've got to put our trust in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We've got to know that no matter what the circumstances tonight, no matter what we're facing, no matter what uh, a mountain might seem to be in our path, I'm here to tell you that God is in control. Amen? Amen? We serve a God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever think or imagine. Hallelujah. God will do, hallelujah, what his word declares to you. Sometimes we can get down in the dumps. We have days like that and we think that God's not there, but I'm here to tell you that he is with you. Praise the Amen. Lord. He is with you through every situation that we face, whatever we go through. Praise the Lord. And I want to go where the Lord is leading. See, if we go on our own path, if we go on our own direction, we're going to be in trouble. But if we say, Lord, lead me, guide me in the footsteps Lord, in your footsteps, where you want me to go. Hallelujah. Even though it might seem scary, sometimes fear might try to overtake you. But if you just keep your eyes on Jesus Christ, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He'll, he'll see you through. Praise God. And I'm thankful for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can Lord. turn to your Bibles to Acts. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. See, we've got to let that be our prayer. Just as the song says, we've got to ask God to lead us. Because see, a lot of times we're in our own rhythm. We're not seeking the Lord and we're not saying, God, what do you want to do in my life? Am I in your will? Am I in your way? We've got to let God do a work in us that we're not just the same old person every day. But, you know, God is doing a new work. Hallelujah. See, God is in the work of doing something new and fresh in our lives. Praise the Lord. I'm going to start reading at verse 23 of chapter 4 in the book of Acts. And it says, And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priest 
and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God which hath made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. Praise the Lord. Who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. Let's pray. Lord, we're thankful, Lord Jesus, that once again, we can come into your presence, Lord. Lord, that we can feast on the manna, Lord, that you have given to us. Lord, I pray these next few moments, God, as we read the scriptures, and Lord, as we receive of the word of God, Lord, let it, I pray, find a good ground in our lives. And Lord, I pray that it would produce good fruit, Jesus. And I pray, God, that you would speak to each and every one of us tonight. Lord, let my words, God, be of you, Lord Jesus. I give you thanks. I give you praise. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. As I was reading this in my devotions, it's amazing how little things, um, you know, and I've been saying it, but it just amazes me how, you know, God just brings, you know, the word, little parts of the word, because not long ago I read or I preached on part of this chapter about James, or I mean, I'm sorry, about Peter and John, and how they had to go before the Sanhedrin because they um, had healed the, the man, the lame, lame man, by the gate, and, uh, you know, they got in trouble for it. They got persecuted. They got, you know, sent before the council and before the priests that were there, and they were even taken in you know, they were making decision what they were going to do to them. Whether they were going to put them to death, put them in prison. Um, I think in the scripture where it said that they ended up, um, you know, letting them go. And they were able to continue to share forth the gospel of Jesus Christ. But when I read the, the, this scripture today in my, or the other day in my devotions... This little part stuck out at me where it said that they came forth when, when they let them go. They came before the chief priests and the chief priests decided to let them go. The, one of the reasons why they decided to let them go was because they, they were in fear of the people. Because the people had seen the marvelous works of the Lord Jesus Christ. They had seen God do a great work right before their eyes. And they knew that they had to watch their steps. They knew they, they had to be careful what they did to Peter and John. They knew that they just couldn't take them away because they knew that it would, uh, it would affect them and it would hurt them in the long run. So they let them go. But I believe that God was in control of the situation. And he continued to let Peter and John go forth to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it said when they let them go, they went back to their own company. Now, I believe that it was the fellowship, the body of Christ, that they went back to. It would just be like if um, me and Mary went out and we were sharing and, you know, maybe we were, you know, because we can see nowadays, even in this nation, we, who would have ever dreamed that people would, be, would have been put in jail for standing up for righteousness. But we can see that, that uh, things are coming to a close here, that things are changing in our nation. But it would just be like if me and Mary went out and we were sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and uh, we were stood before the court because they didn't like what we were doing. 
And then all of a sudden we were set free and we came to church and we began to tell everyone how God came on the scene. How God delivered them or delivered us. It's the same way that what happened here. It says they, they, they went back to their own company. It was the saints. It was the body of Jesus Christ that they came together. And it says that they reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said unto them. See, it's important that we come together and we realize how important it is that we are found exhorting the name of Jesus Christ when we come in and we share the good things that God has done in our lives. Even sometimes the bad stuff that God we're still believing and we're trusting the Lord that he's going to see us through these situations in our lives. It's important. And that's just with what they did. It says that they went back and they told what was going on. See, there was a need there. They knew that they needed God. And they knew that they needed the church of Jesus Christ. Because they went back and they told what they were up against. What they were facing. And what does it say that they did? It says, when they heard that, they lifted up their voices unto God. Oh, I'm so thankful that we can, you're, you're quiet tonight, but you know, we can come in the house of God and we can lift our voice up to Him. Hallelujah. Amen. He hears us. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, we can lift up our voice. You know, a lot of people will say, well, all that shout, and I'm just not used to that. Well, then you're not really reading the scriptures because there is a lot of scriptures that talk about raising your voice, about shouting unto God. It's important that we take the time to lift up the Savior. See, when we come into the presence of the Lord, we're not to have our, we're, we try to let the things go that we've come to church with. Because, see, this is God's time. This is when we come together and we're worshiping Him. We have time of worship where we play the instruments and we're to sing forth the praises of our Lord. We're to lift up our hands and glorify the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful that we can come together and we can lift up our voice unto God. Now I know a lot of times that we're not found doing it. Or we have slacked. But I'm here to encourage you not to give up. Not to give in. But keep on going to the Lord. And let your prayers be known unto God tonight. How else is God going to know what you need if you don't lift your voice to Him? Hallelujah. If you don't seek Him, praise the Lord. It's important. See, they came together, the saints and the fellowship. See, we've come together, though they're, the whole place not might be packed out. We have come together in one accord, and we know that where two or three are gathered together in my name, he says, I am in the midst of them. Amen. He is here, and is here to do a mighty work in our lives. I like where it says in Philippians, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with joy. He didn't say he came with dread to do it. See, we've got to come and say, oh my, I can come to the God, hallelujah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God that can do the impossible tonight. We can give it to God. We should be just overjoyed that we can come to the Lord. It made me think of... Uh, over in other countries, I've watched little segments. I've never been in another country, but I've seen little segments where 
what they do in other countries. In some countries, um, chi you know, this noise will go off like a big, you know, chime or a loud noise. Some, some people have even said that it sounds a little eerie. And they know when that sound goes off, they're to stop what they're doing and they pray to their gods. And they are faithful at what they do. They don't miss one time. There isn't not missing. They are to do it. Stop what they're doing and start praying to their gods. And it made me realize how much more as we serving a God, hallelujah, that is alive. He is not dead, but he is risen, hallelujah. We have power and we know we don't have to dust off an idol tonight, but we serve the living God, hallelujah. Amen. We serve a God that can do anything. Oh, you know, this morning it was me and it was Nancy, it was mom. And when I come in, I, I had to, I have to admit to you, uh, I, my mind was just racing. I had a lot of things on my mind. And I had to say, now wait, I just got to, I got to stop. Lord, take these things out of my mind. I don't want to think about those things right now. I want to spend time praying. I want to spend time praying and seeking the Lord. And, and as I began to pray and seek the Lord, I just felt, and I, I looked around and I heard Nancy, she's kneeling down here and she's praying. And then I, I look over and I see Mom and she's praying. And all of a sudden, just this wonderful presence of the Lord, I just felt it come down and I knew that God, was listening. Oh, it's so wonderful to know that God hears your prayers. Hallelujah. Don't get discouraged. And I'm here to encourage you. We need you to come and to pray. Hallelujah. God wants you to bring your request known unto the Lord. We need, this church needs prayer. The only thing that's going to keep it together is if we pray and seek the Lord. Hallelujah. To know that we can walk in the ways of the Lord. I'm so thankful that I can come and I can lift up my voice unto God. And he hears every prayer. Praise the Lord. It says here with one accord. See, it's important that we stick close together. That we stick close together. We don't let strife. We don't let envy. We don't let nothing get in the way of what God wants to do in our lives. But when we come together in one accord, God will do great things in our lives. Amen. See, we've got to make sure that our life is clean. That we don't have any sin. We don't have anything that would hold us back from God doing a work in us. I'm thankful for the scriptures because Jesus even said, He said, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you receive it and it will be yours. Boy, that's plain and simple, isn't it? That's not hard to figure out. If we pray, if we believe, we will receive it. It will be ours. That person that you're praying, as Nancy was sharing, she's continuing to pray for her husband. All we have to do is just keep on praying. God's going to meet that need. You know, I thought the other day, you think of certain people and you think, oh my, there's just, you know, sometimes you feel like you've come to a brick wall. But we've got to know that's just the enemy trying to, to defeat us or try to get us to be discouraged that we don't pray. We've got to know that God is listening and God will answer our prayer. Amen. He said again in Matthew chapter 8, he said I, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth, as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. Oh, have you ever, you've been by yourself praying, but then when you get someone else praying, 
I like that scripture where it says one can put a thousand to flight, but two can put ten thousand to flight. Just one more person. How much stronger our prayers are. Yes, that's yeah. right. How much stronger it becomes when we begin to pray. Yeah. Oh, I'm so thankful that I had a praying father. He prayed for me. That's the one of the reasons why. I don't want you to get discouraged. You're still believing for your family to be saved. Keep on praying. Keep on seeking the Lord. Hallelujah. He will meet your needs. Amen. He's a God that loves you and cares for you. Amen. Oh, I'm so thankful tonight. Where it said they lifted their voices. And what did they say? It says that they said, Lord, thou art God which has made heaven. See, they were reminding the Lord. They were reminding themselves that we serve the God, hallelujah, that has made the heavens and the earth. He has formed this thing. Oh, you know, when you look out over the beautiful country, just in our area, we have a beautiful place where we live. And we think of the goodness of God. How could anyone in their right mind ever not think that there was a God? Amen. He has formed it. Hallelujah. That's why I like where it says in Psalms 102, In the beginning you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. Yes. Oh, just think. See, I think we get, we're limited sometimes. We limit God. I don't want to put limitations on God. I want to keep seeking Him no matter what the circumstance. God, I said, God, no matter what the case may be, I know that you are in control. See, that's the part we've always got to focus on. He is in control. Hallelujah. But they reminded that He made the heavens and the earth and the sea. You know, I know some of you have been to the beach and you can just look out over and the, and the waters, they just go beyond. Your eye can't even go out that far. Amen. And how the water only comes up so far and then it goes back in. Oh, I'm thankful that I serve this living God. He is the God of the living tonight. Hallelujah. But we've got to know that we've got to put our trust in Him. And we've got to know that we've got to come together in fellowship and in one accord. We are the saints. We are the body of Christ. If you have turned away from your old life, you said, I've, I've given my heart to Jesus Christ. I've, I've repented of my sin. See, a lot of people, they'll say, well, and they go back to their sin. No, once you repent, you turn away from that. And you don't go back. See, God will give you the power to overcome sin tonight. Amen? Amen. I've seen so many stories on television. You know, first of all, I've heard people say, well, I, I don't have that miraculous story of, uh, and I'm, I guess I'm one of those t uh, people. I never went out and I never did drugs or, you know, did all that, th all those things. I always feel like God kept me from those things. And I know that it's God. But you hear the people uh, and someone would say, well, that's just, that's not an exciting testimony. But really, God, to keep, which that's why we've got to pray for our children. I say it to Matthias every day. The things that you know, one time, one decision can change your whole life. One choice that you make could change your whole life. Yes. And you will never, ever, ever be able to. It will, it, God's grace and mercy, He can do a lot of, He can do great and mighty things. But it, it, 
A lot of times, see, the devil puts chains on people and he binds them up. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. And he'll definitely keep you longer than you want to stay. Oh, I'm so thankful that he saved me. Hallelujah. I might not have did those things, but I still needed a savior. Hallelujah. I still was a wretched sinner and I needed Jesus. To save my soul. The other day as I was in, um, I think it was Chick-fil-A and this little baby in the high chair. It's amazing when you do think that we're born into sin. And that little baby, just as little as he was, he was being ornery. He was being rotten. <laughs> We're born into sin. That's why Jesus came to set us free from the bondage of sin. Hallelujah. I'm thankful. And I like that scripture where it says in 1 John, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Oh, hallelujah. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us. From all sin. Isn't that wonderful? That's a wonderful scripture. We can know coming together because of what Jesus has done. We are found here in fellowship and in one accord. And then we know that the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us. From all of our sins. Hallelujah. We can walk in the goodness of our God. And we can know that he is with us. Hallelujah. And he will see us through. But they said to themselves. After they had prayed. They had realized. Because see they knew that they were up against something. They knew that they were going out. You know I was reading in Acts. All the times that the apostles got themselves put in jail. And I just read the other day the one where the, the angel of the Lord come in and just got them out of there. And it, and it even said in the scripture that they didn't even realize it. Not even the guards, none of the people in the prison had even realized it was a miraculous it was a divine move, a supernatural move of God. And it says as soon as they got out, they didn't go and hide. No, they went right back to share the word of God. I want to be like that tonight. And I want to know that when I come together in one accord, when we come together in this little church house, praise the Lord, in fellowship and in unity, we can know that we have power because we serve the God of the heavens. Hallelujah. The God that created the heavens and the God that created the earth. Nothing, hallelujah, can stand in our way. Nothing will be able to sidetrack us if we keep our focus on the Lord tonight. Praise the Lord. Because he said here, who by the mouth of thy servant David had said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. But yeah. see, it's really been that way from the beginning. Since Jesus come into the world, what happened? I thought the other day when he was born, you know, because at first I thought of all the other things that happened to him when he was getting ready to die on the cross. But right away, as soon as he was born, Herod tried to to get him, tried to get the wise men to, to go and, and tell him where he was. Oh, I'm so thankful that, that he didn't have his way. Hallelujah. But God had a plan. Praise the Lord. And that's why we can stand here in the presence of God. And we can lift up holy hands unto our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. But it's been that way from the beginning. What did they say? They said, Jesus said, if they hate me, they'll hate you. We're going to be persecuted. It's not an easy route sometimes when we make that decision and we say we're going to follow the Lord, is it? Yeah. It's not always that way because, see, people aren't going to understand what we're doing. 
Because their eyes haven't been opened to the truth. Their eyes are blinded by the, the, this world. And they need a Savior. But we have said we're going to serve the Lord. And we're going to live our lives for the Lord. And even though we are persecuted and there might come things on the right side of us and on the left side of us, but we know that God is with us and he will see us through every situation. Amen? Amen. And we can put our trust in him and know that he is with us. Praise the Lord. Everything is in his hands tonight. And we need to be encouraged that when we come together, there is power here. Amen? Amen. There is power here, praise the Lord. No matter what the need is, no matter what your situation, whether you think your life is a mess and there's no way that it can be fixed, I'm here to tell you you're in the right place because God can touch you and He can set you free and He can heal you and deliver you and give you just what you need. Can you say amen tonight? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let's stand in His presence tonight. Everything good, everything bright, everything holy, everything right, everything worthy, all that